three, two, one. Here we go. Okay. So, as per usual, I wasn't really planning to record tonight, and then, um, and then I was sitting on the couch, and I was like, I got shit to say, and, um, you know, again, as per usual, no road home, uh, which, you know, uh, it really does suck because I'm like, I'm like, I gotta have you back on the podcast. And then I always end up recording when she's not home. Um, but you know, we'll get there. It's, it's so hard to schedule because it's like the, the, in the rare occasions when it's like, we're actually home together. It's like, well, what do you want to do? It's, it's almost never going to be, let's record a podcast together. Um, unless like the only times that it actually ends up happening is like, Hey, this Friday night, I want to record with you. Like, like last Friday was my birthday. We could have done literally anything that I wanted to. Um, absolutely. And there was nothing that wasn't on the table. If I was like, hey, I want to do this thing. And I had already made a bunch of plans of what I wanted to do on my birthday. Um, and it wasn't until like a week or and, and I made these plans like maybe a month in advance. Um, and it wasn't until like a week or two before that I realized like, fuck, I should have been like, you know, li- well, I want to record a podcast with you on Friday night. Um, so, you know, we'll get there, especially with softball winding down finally. I mean, it feels like it has been a wild ass summer. I mean, just with, I know that I talked about it on the last episode of just how busy it has been, what a busy summer this has been. Um, but, uh, but, but softball is winding down now. So we'll get there. Um, hopefully, maybe maybe in October. It's maybe late September. Um, but again, September is pretty much fucking full too. Like we're going to the Highland Games, which is going to be awesome. Um, I've never been. I never even fucking heard about it until I started dating her. Uh, it's the Scottish Highland Games in New Hampshire. It's where they fucking take you know, you know, ninety foot logs and throw them across a field or something like that. Um, so for her birthday, I got her tickets to go see that. Um, so we'll go spend a weekend away, which will be nice anyways. I mean, no matter what, if we're going to get to spend a weekend away, then that's awesome. So for my birthday, she got me, uh, she got me, I don't know how to put this. I guess it's a gift certificate is the best way to put it. It's the gift certificate to go skydiving, which... Fucking finally. I mean, I've only been talking about wanting to go skydiving for the last 20 years. Um, So uh, I'm finally going to go skydiving. I'm hoping to pull this off in September sometime. I got to, what I really have to do is look at the calendar at work and see where I can take a day off. Because you know what? If I'm going to go do this, basically, if I'm going to do anything, I want to get paid for it. Okay. So I only like typically the only time off that I take from work, I, or at least the only time off that I try to take, is um, uh, Sundays and um, and like you know if I have something going on, like like her birthday happened to fall on my day off. Normally I work on my day off, um, but her birthday happened to fall on my day off. My birthday happened to fall on my day off, so. I decided to take those days off. You know, if, if, if something like special is happening on a day off, then I'll, then I'll actually take the day off. But for the most part, if I'm going to go do something, I try to make it happen and take like sick time or annual leave or something like that. Like I'm going to, I want to get paid for everything that I'm doing. Um, and it's my favorite too. like, whether it be sick time or annual time, it's my favorite to be like, you know, fucking hanging out on a beach or something and just thinking to myself, like, yeah, I'm making money right now while I do this. So, so I got to look at the calendar, try to figure out, you know, some space where I can go. Um, the website says, you know, plan on, plan on this taking up half a day. So, uh, So, you know, I'll probably try and schedule it for like 10 or 11 in the morning and and it'll take up, you know, that first half of the day or whatever. And then, um, you know, because it takes up half a day and it's all the way up in Maine, it's highly unlikely that Rose is going to want to like come and watch the whole thing. Because really, like if you're just a spectator of someone skydiving, like what are you really doing? Like, you're, you know, because I'm doing this classroom portion of it. You know, you're kind of just standing there watching me do the classroom portion. That would be boring as shit, right? And then when it's time for me to actually go jump, you're not actually going up in the plane with me. You're just standing on the ground and waiting to see. And I mean, the you know, from what I what from what I think I know about skydiving is that you jump out of the plane at ten thousand feet in the air. 
we've all seen planes up pretty high and uh from 10,000 feet you might barely be able to uh um you might barely be able to see the airplane much less the person jumping out of it and and the person jumping out of it you probably won't even see their parachute until you know they're almost to the ground so so uh so she is not going to come and watch me which is absolutely fine um so let's see here hold on let me just uh, reply to this text real quick uh da, 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 da. Um, there. Okay. Um, so anyways, that's what she got me for my birthday, or at least that was her big gift. Um, you know, from, from, uh, from Rena, from Rena, sweet, sweet Rena, who is a silent assassin, got me a, uh, kind of a, it's the challenge coin from Game of Thrones. It's the coin that the faceless man gives Arya, um, in season two or three of the show. Um, Rena, my our, our little silent assassin, gave me the assassin challenge coin from Game of Thrones. Uh, Graphite got me a very cool sock holder to hold my uh, an incredible abundance of socks. So finally, I have some fucking room in one of my drawers. Um, and uh, and then my mate, you know, on top of the uh, on top of the skydiving. Also got me a bunch of uh, a bunch of clothes, which is great because you know my extra large everything that I've worn for the last twenty something years. Um, finally, actually, you know, I have you know some clothes that I have clothes that are actually fitting now. You know, I got to work on jeans next. You know, and I wore a pair of jeans the other day, and uh, they were a size forty. Um, which hey, there's plenty of people who who wear a size forty or whatever. Uh, I don't fit into a size 40 as well as I once did. And, um, like, the this particular pair of jeans, like, the legs are kind of, I don't want they're not skinny jeans because I've never worn those in my life. But the leg portion is actually kind of skinny. So the leg portion doesn't look too bad on me, but the, uh, but the waist portion is, like, way too big. Um, so I got to invest in a few pairs of jeans. But all that said, uh, yeah, summer has gone by too fast. Um, I have to have Ro on the show, like an actual, like sit down with me episode, not a, uh, not a, you know, pop in at the, the last 10 minutes or something. Um, and, uh, and both our birthdays were a lot of fun and, uh, we had a softball tournament. Congratulations to the Panzanella softball team in Newmarket, New Hampshire, Newmarket women's softball, because they won, um, uh, which was absolutely insane. Um, they lost last year. They made it to, you know, they made it to the finals, and then they lost to another team. And then going into Sunday's game, it was a Saturday Sunday tournament, and um, and going into Sunday's game, uh, I don't, I don't really know. I, you know, from uh, from what I heard everyone else saying, it didn't seem like the Panzanella's team was the favorite to win. Because this other team had had gone um, mostly undefeated. Out of all of the games that they played this entire season in Newmarket, which I want to say was like 10 games leading up to the tournament. And then they also, you know, the, both teams played like another three or four games during the tournament. Um, um, hold on a second. Got to reply to a text. Um... Both teams, um, they, 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 yeah, so they, they both, it was like 10, 10 games leading up to this final t- tournament, and then both teams probably played like, I don't know, three or four games. Uh, but this other team had only lost one game during the regular season, and they didn't lose any games going, you know, but at the end of the tournament, going into the final. Uh, so they were the, fi- the favorite to win, um, you know from what most people would consider, I guess. Um, and uh, game starts off really fucking strong with Panzanellas. It's it's Panzanellas versus Black Widows. Game starts off really strong with Panzanellas. They come right out of the gate with, like, you know, four runs or something like that. Um, Panzanellas was visiting team, so they, you know, they're batting at the top of the first, uh, which means that Black Widows in, in the bottom of the seventh gets gets last up. Um, so, um, I think it was like the fifth inning by the end of the fifth inning, I think it was seven to eight 
and uh, and then we go into the bottom of the seventh, and um, and it's still seven to eight, and bo- or top of the seventh. I'm sorry, go to the top of the seventh. It's seven to eight, and uh, Black Widows got their three outs fucking almost immediately. Like it was just a real quick inning, and uh, then we go into the bottom of the seventh, and uh, one of the guys next to me goes, "Okay, okay, it's it's seven to eight right now. If 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 Black Widows scores a run, and then and then we can just get the three outs." And, uh, you know, go into, go into extra innings and then, you know, they just have to get a couple more runs after that. And I was like, yes, or what we could hope really happens is that we just hold them here and this game ends right now, (laughs) uh, which is basically what happened. Um, uh, Black Widows was only able to get one person on first base and then, and they had three outs and, uh, I couldn't believe it. I was blown away when it happened um i didn't see it coming um i don't think anyone saw it coming so uh congratulations to the panzanella softball team uh they crushed it um really great work uh in the tournament and all season long so anyways it was a really great birthday weekend um so hold on a second i gotta text my mate real quick uh let her know uh your food and those and a salad are on the counter for you. Okay, I love you. Bye. Um, so if you read the titles of episodes, um, you will see that the title for this episode is uh, SH. S H W Y P N companion episode. So what that means is shit happens when you're pretty naked. Uh, and, and this is going to be considered your companion episode for, uh, Jay's podcast that took place in January of this past, or, or I'm sorry, in June of this year. Um, I, uh, I'm a little behind. I finally, I have finally officially listened to every episode of Dateline that uh, that they have published. All 400 fucking episodes of murder and chaos and, and betrayal and uh, anxiety and, um, and insecurity-inducing horror. Um, go ahead, listen to 400 episodes. If you uh, can come out of there and believe that you can't trust anyone, you're a better person than me. Um, a fucking podcast the, the or, or show, whichever one you listen to or watch. If you listen to it too much, which I did, um, it's, uh, yeah, it'll make you believe that every. Well, I mean, it, you know, you have to always believe that everyone's capable of murder anyways. But, I mean, it'll have you not trusting anyone. I mean, fucking people will murder each other for a dollar, apparently. They'll murder you for no fucking reason. Um, so... Uh, but I finally finished listening to all 400 episodes of that. So, uh, I got to get caught up on some other podcasts that I enjoy. Uh, first one that I went to was shit happens when you party naked, which, uh, which Jason has posted a couple episodes. Um, I tried to listen to one today that was called like a ACBC. I follow them on Instagram and they follow me back. Um, like ACBC pod or ABCB pod, something like that. It's a movie podcast, I think. Um, but uh, Jason had a podcast where he's either talking to them or talking about them, or I'm not sure which one it is. Either way, I couldn't get through it. Um, sorry, Jason. I just couldn't. But what I did listen to last week was his episode called uh, uh, Jay Pride Month. Um, and it was not only a good episode, but I had a lot of takeaways for myself to listen to. So, uh, you know, as I listened to it, I was like, oh, there's some shit here that I would like to talk. So I'm, I'm hijacking Jason's podcast, right? So he's on Patreon. You can find him on Patreon. It's $3.50 a month. It's less than the price of a coffee for one fucking whole month. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm going to hijack your, your podcast episode. Sorry, Jason. But this is the price you pay for cutting me off short on a phone call. And, um, and for also never acknowledging my voicemail. Um, first of all, gay ally virtue signaling. Uh, he talks about this a little bit in the beginning of his ep- episode. about Because, uh, again, this, this episode was posted in June, which is Gay Pride Month. And it is, you know, it is really, I don't know, I, I think it's funny, I guess. Um, 
you know, slash uh, not funny, slash, you know, uh, virtue signaling, slash uncool. How, you know, companies um, that, you know, they'll they'll do things by by month right so like you know as soon as as soon as gay pride month is over on july 1st they switch over to being patriotic and then um you know black history month you know that it's like it's it's you know and and christmas like everything is and and christmas is it's, it's we live in a weird ass fucking country all right let's start there we live in a very strange country the way that like we are supposedly built on a freedom of religion. And I don't really, I guess I don't know enough about history and what it was like in England, where I guess, you know, where or wherever we came from, Britain, whatever, Europe, where they wanted everyone to be Christian. And then we come over here to America and, and we have the, our Bill of Rights and one of those is the freedom of religion. But people will still say that we're a Christian nation. Which no, we're not. We're we're not supposed to be. That's for damn sure. Um, you know, people gave Donald Trump, and I I was never really a big Donald Trump supporter in the first place, but people gave Donald Trump shit because he had said something. He never like came out and actually said he didn't believe in God, but he kind of like leaned that way of being an atheist, um, and. Uh, and, and and people say, like, oh, we're a God-fearing nation. You know, we're a Christian nation. It's like, no, we're not. Like, we're, or at least we're not supposed to be. Um, you know, but the, anyways, that's all about Christmas. I'm talking about gay stuff now. Uh, the, the whole gay ally virtue signaling thing is is nonsense of, like, anyone who's like, I'm a support. Well, great. Good for you being a support. But why do you need to vocalize that? How about you just fucking... I don't know. For me, I'm just, I've always been like, look, you know, we're all just a bunch of humans here riding this big blue marble through space. Uh, can't we, you know, like, I don't give a fuck about what anyone does. This is why I, I, you know, Roe asked me the other day, like, who I was going to vote for for, like, Senate or something, because that's the next big one that we got coming up is Senate, Congress, that type of shit. I think governor's coming up. Um, I told her, whoever is on the libertarian ticket, like, that's. That's where I lean towards. My idea of libertarian and my idea of what all politics and all fucking everything should be is stay out of my fucking way and I'll stay out of yours and we'll get out we'll get along just fine. Right? If it like why is that so goddamn hard for anyone to understand? Like if I'm just going about my day and I do my thing and you're going, you know, if I'm walking through Market Basket, I'm in Market Basket tonight and there's probably give or take, you know, maybe a hundred other people in the store with me. No one's fucking walking by each other going, hey, uh, what are your beliefs on religion? What are your beliefs on abortion? What are your beliefs on race? What are your be- No one's fucking stopping to ask each other these questions because nobody actually gives a fuck. That's the reality of it is nobody actually cares about what, what an individual thing is. Like they, they care when they're sitting at home talking to their fucking boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. Um, you know, and they care enough... To be able to say, like, they keep that shit inside for the most part. They keep those thoughts inside, which is mostly where they should be. All right? If you have hate in your fucking brain and in your heart for someone that you've never met before, then, you know, that's a that's a you problem. But it doesn't make any sense when you fucking, when, you, you know, you're walking through the market. If you have that much anger towards a thing then you should be super vocal about it. That's my new opinion on my, and and my very original opinion, I know. But that's my new opinion on it. If you're going to be the type of person who's like, I hate black people, then you should be able to just, you know, go ahead. Go ahead, walk down the street, and every single black person that you see, man, woman, trans, gay, straight, fucking every single one of them, Make sure that you walk up to them and tell them how much you hate them and why. I'd love to. I'd love to hear that part of the why, because there is no why. There's literally no fucking reason for it. For you, for you to hate a complete random stranger that you've never met, never talked to, you don't know anything about them. Like, I don't know. Hate is just so fucking. It's it's like I can hate another person. Like there are, uh, you know, there's probably a, a you know five, ten, fifteen people that I've encountered in my entire life that I'm like, man, I fuck it. I genuinely hate that person. 
but I hate them because I actually know them, because I've actually interacted with them. I know how they feel about things. They've done something egregious to me. Um, you know, that type of shit. Like, that's a reason to hate someone. But when you can say that you hate a total stranger, like, fuck off, okay? Um, like, after 9-11, all these people that, like, hated Muslims or hated Arabic people. Like, why? How could you possibly hate all of them when you don't fucking know any of them? Um, it's so fucking stupid. So, there. Check mark on the uh, gay ally virtue signaling from Jason. Uh, fitness coach. Fitness coaches. Um, I don't. I don't feel real great about them. Um, he talked about that on his episode. Uh, don't feel real great about fitness coaches. Uh, there we go. Jason Olme checking in on the uh, on the comments. Yeah, I'm hijacking your uh, your episode, buddy. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. Um, uh, fitness coaches. Um, yeah, not a big fan of a fitness coach. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, I've had two personal trainers in my entire, you know, in my in, in my life. Okay, one was when I was about 15 years old. He was a cool guy, but the but really all he did was I joined the gym. You paid an extra 50 bucks for this personal trainer to basically walk you around the gym, write up a little plan for you of what you're gonna do at the gym, and this is your regimen. And you could pay 50 bucks every time you want if you wanted to go see him a, once a week. And pay him 50 bucks and he would walk you around and he would tell you like, you know, how to progress through this thing, right? My parents paid the extra 50 bucks so I would know what the fuck I was doing at the gym. Um, and it worked out really well, but I only needed it the one time, all right? Planet Fitness, I've gone to their personal trainer one time. And that one, Planet Fitness is a fucking corporation, okay? They don't actually give a fuck about whether or not you lose weight. They really just, they're a money-making machine. Um... So they don't give a fuck. And they have a little thing in there, in the Planet Fitness, they have a little section called the 30-Minute Express, right? Which it's great if you're just a you know, New Year's resolution person. That's about the only time that area of the gym gets used uh, religiously is you know for that month of January and half of February. That's about the only time that part of the gym gets used is because... What they do, what Plant Fitness does, is they have a personal trainer, and they will take and every piece of equipment that is inside that 30-minute express. There is a duplicate piece of of equipment out on the regular gym floor, and when you talk to the your personal trainer, he will walk you around to the duplicate equipment on the floor, and he'll show you how that works. But really, he's really just you know because it's a corporation, they don't want people getting injured or anything in the gym. They want to make sure they don't get fucking sued. So he's just showing you, hey, this is what we've decided is safe. And you are going to, you know, the corporation, I'm sure, is telling their personal trainers, you're going to walk these people around and tell them these are the pieces of equipment that you use. They don't teach you dick about dumbbells. They don't teach you dick about, you know, cable rows or anything like that. They don't teach you anything about anything, anything fucking crazy. You know, they don't get into anything crazy. All right. And, that, and you know. I've talked to a bunch of fucking fitness people, not necessarily all me. All me is pretty good about it so far. We'll see about, you know, how long that keeps up. But there's a bunch of people, a um, bunch of people that, you know, I've talked to that are like, oh, Planet Fitness is stupid. Fuck Planet Fitness. Like fitness people, right? Guys that are like legit bodybuilders. I don't get it. I don't understand why, you know, they hate on Planet Fitness. I think that it's just fine. A lot of cardio equipment in Planet Fitness, which is great for me because then I don't have to walk in there and worry about all the cardio equipment being taken up. My biggest problem is that they only have fucking four flat benches for the dumbbell area, but you know whatever. And and they also don't have a um, you know a free dumbbell. It's all those uh, what are they called like fly machine? And it's not fly machine. Whatever. It's a fucking a Smith machine. They only have Smith machines for like bench presses. Um. But that's my only real problem with Plant Fitness. Um, everything else is like, hey, this is this is perfect for me and and for ninety percent of people. Without Planet Fitness, I don't think you'd have as many people working out. I think that um, I think that without Planet Fitness, you you know you'd have plenty of people that are like, you know, I don't want to spend that much money to go to a gym. You know, there's bun like there's there's a gym a few towns over from here um, that charges you. 
it's $90 for three months, right? So that breaks down to $30 a month, but you can only pay the $90. Like you can't be like, I'll give you $30 a month. You can only start at the three month level. And then it's 180 for six months or 300. So it's only technically $5 a month more than Planet Fitness. But but if I'm looking at things in small numbers, which is how I like to look at it, I'm like, I can join Planet Fitness for, I can join Planet Fitness for $24 a month. Twenty, It's like, I think it's $24.99 a month. So 25 bucks a month. I can join Planet Fitness for. And, um, and, and it's, and it's by, you know, it's charged per month. So without Planet Fitness, I don't think that you'd have as many people working out, which is not, uh, you know, not a great thing. You know, people are working out people. I think people are working out more today than they have been in all of history. Um, let's see here, Jason, uh, that was a bad trainer. Uh, lots of trainers are dumb fucks or uh, I'm sorry. No, he didn't say dumb fucks. He said dumb dumbs. Um, but uh, I think what he meant to say was dumb fucks. Um, but what he said after talking about fitness coaches was fuck coaches. And I am down with a fuck coach. All right. Now, the way he describes it in his episode is perfect. And again, that is shit happens when you party naked. It's uh it's 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 um on the inner Cir- inner circle podcast network on Patreon. Go look it up. It's three dollars and fifty cents a month. Um but a fuck coach, all right. Now, my girlfriend, she might not be as into this as, as I am. This is a person, as he explains it, this is a person who's just gonna watch you, right? It's not for any sort of like taboo effect he's not sitting in the corner jerking off while you fuck or anything like that like he's just gonna watch you and your girlfriend or wife or boyfriend or whatever and uh or she or she's gonna watch whichever one and um and and then you know give you you know tips and advice right because i want to know that i'm doing things right i want to know that you know everything is is you know that i'm working that i'm working on everything correctly here i don't want to you know i don't want to be worried about like you know, you know, like I want to, I want to know that I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing things the right way. All right. I've got about 20 years of experience at this and I still don't feel like I'm doing it right. Um, I sure do hope that I am, but, um, but I'm, I'm down with the, the, the fuck coach idea. As long as it's like a, uh, you know, like he said, like, you know, this is no like taboo type of thing. Um, this is just a, this is just a person who's going to give you advice as you go along through your motions and whatever. And then I don't know if this would, th- what I don't know is, is this someone who's good? Cause I couldn't have this. I couldn't have someone that's like in my ear during the actual act. Like what I want is an after action report. That's what I want. I want someone to look at it and, you know, to, to pull me aside afterwards and be like, Hey man, here's the things that you did really good. All right. You, you keep this up, you keep this up and you keep this up. These are really good we don't really need to work on this area, but in these areas, right? Like maybe next time you try a couple of different positions, maybe, maybe you try this one. All right. And, and, you know, gives me some reading material, maybe shows me some websites. All right. Here, here's, a, here's an article on some good stuff that you might like this, you know, someone that is doing that work for me. I need someone to do that work for me. Right. I don't need someone else to do the other work for me. I just need someone to do the, do the reading and then tell me, what to read, right? So, um, I just realized that my microphone was turned basically the wrong way. So, moving on from fuck coach, I couldn't help but notice a couple of times during uh, during that episode, J Pride Month. Um, I have twenty. Uh, hold on, uh, Jason. I have twenty five years uh, experience. I'm ninety nine percent sure I'm ne- I'm worse now than when I was ten than I was ten years ago. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I definitely think uh, I'm worse now than I was when I was twenty. Uh, I'd like to think that in the last couple of years I have improved, but um, I don't know. Honestly, I feel like in the last year. I'm lacking a little bit in the, in the last year. I'm, I'm, I'm starting all my, I'm, I'm, I'm quote unquote over the hill now, right? I'm 40 years old. So I'm like over the hill. I feel like, uh, you know, am I, on, you know, am I on the downslope of my, of my life here of like, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm getting worse at this. Um, it could be happening. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I think my uncle just jumped in at the wrong point of this conversation. Um, I couldn't help but notice, as as Jason moved along through his episode, he mentioned uh, Chris Wetzke a couple of times, which was disappointing. You know, it's fine to mention Chris Wetzke. He's fine, and I like him quite a bit. Uh, my problem with it, he mentions me zero times. Zero times. I'm a goddamn Patreon. I pay to listen to your show. I get mentioned exactly zero times, uh, firstly. Secondly, he also mentions during the show... Uh, that he loves, you know, he's, he's talking about like, he's talking about gay pride month and like, oh, I know that I talked about this last year and now Chris, you're going to, you're going to end up calling me and bitching that I already talked about this last year. Um, you know, well, Chris, I would say to you, my friend, at least Jason answers the phone when you call him. Um, and on top of that, at least he doesn't cut you off mid sentence and say, Hey, I got to go. My kids are yelling at me. Um, you know, I try to talk to Jason on the phone. We're having a very serious conversation and he's like, Hey man, I got to go. No callback or anything. That's that part's fine. I didn't necessarily ask for a callback, but then like a week later I call him and leave a voicemail and, uh, I never get, I don't even get so much as a text to say like, Hey man, I missed your call. What's up? Do you want to talk now? Nothing. Like what if I was like, what if this was like a stranger things type of thing, right? Where I'm trapped in the other side of a dimension and somehow I have a cell phone connection, but, uh, but, and I, and, and whatever, you know, I hit last number redial and it happens to be Jason fucking all me and, uh, and it calls him and, and I get voicemail, right? Which, okay, fine. You know, I understand sometimes you can't or just don't want to answer the phone. That's fine. Um, but, uh, but you know, no text to say like, Hey man, sorry, I missed your call. Like, okay. You know, and then he says, he makes a comment about, um, you know, my, my, I got a new phone and my voicemail isn't set up yet. You know, that bullshit excuse, that bullshit excuse that you give everyone when you just, you know, you never set up your voicemail. It always like, you know, you, you ring fucking five times or whatever. And it says, uh, and it says, um, um, you know, you have reached 603, which actually with him, he, you know, he's only lived in New Hampshire for 20 years and he still hasn't changed his number from fucking Georgia. All right. Let it go, buddy. Um, but you know, you know, the generic ass voicemail that I'm talking about, you know, you would, you would, if you haven't set up your voicemail, that's one thing, but I know that you got the, the thing on your cell phone on the top of the screen that says you missed a call from Donnie motherfucking Gates. All right, and he can't even send me a text message. Hey, man, I missed your call. What's up? Hey, man, you want to call me now? Hey, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. I'm on the other. I'm in the upside down, and fucking Vecna is about to f- crush my goddamn skull. And I wanted you to be my last phone call, and uh, and instead I get nothing, nothing at all. All right, but hey, you know if Chris Wutsky calls, I guess you'll answer the phone every time, right? All right, moving on. He talks about uh, uh about um you know his phone directing him like like the idea of their phone directing you of of who to hook up with. I that sparked an idea in my head uh, for Tinder. I mean basically you know I've never used Tinder. I have a general idea of how it works. It's a dating app. I mean aren't they all basically the same? They're all very similar. Tinder seems like it. It's basically you know the 2020 version of the you know that old website hot or not. Um. That's that's how I see it, anyways. Um, so, Tinder, I got an idea for you, right? I mean, Tinder can have this. I have no use for it, so Tinder can have the idea, all right? And and I don't know if this is where Jason was going with his idea or not, but this is this is my idea. It is a proximity thing, right? So you set up your your little profile or whatever. These are my likes. These are my dislikes. This is how I look, whatever type of thing, right? And everyone everyone that uses the app does this. Now it's a proximity thing, right? So if I go out to the Portsmouth Gaslight and there's, you know, 50, 60, 70 people in, in the bar hanging out and I'm within, you know, 50 or 60 feet of all of these people, my little Tinder thing is going to be like, hey, man, this girl right over here, she's a match on all of the things that you like and dislike. Like this this person over here is a match to you. Um you know, or these five people, They're, these five people are in the bar right now. I think that that might be the next evolution. And I'm sure that I'm not necessarily telling Tinder anything. Well, first of all, Tinder's absolutely never going to listen to this podcast. Um, 
but I'm certain that they're not, I'm not necessarily giving them anything that they haven't already thought of five years ago. Um, I'm sure they're working on that. I'm sure they're working on rolling that idea out very soon anyways. Um, let's see here. Jason says, uh, let's see. Uh, Ro, <laughs> Ro says, uh, no coach, uh, or you could ask the person you're with. Um, Row the whole point is, uh, Jason said, Row po- the whole bleh, bleh, bleh. Row the whole point is kind of weird and creepy, and you're self conscious because someone is watching slash judging. Um, <laughs> um, bear in mind, I say nothing on this without the knowledge that my girlfriend will definitely hear it, uh, and we can talk about it later. Um, um, so yeah, the, t- the whole Tinder idea, I'm not telling them anything they probably didn't think of fucking five years ago. Uh, but you know, that that's probably the next evolution of Tinder and all these other dating, uh, apps and websites. And really, it's really just a race to see who, the, who's going to get the idea first who's, or who's going to roll it out first. That's probably the race to the next thing. Right. <sighs> so that was, that was my big idea for them. Um, Jason, fuck the Beatles. Um, Beatles suck, okay? They always did. Uh, I'll never understand how they ended up being such a big deal, all right? Them and their dorky-ass fucking haircuts. Um, the the monkeys were arguably better but by a slight margin, and they still sucked, okay? All of them suck. Uh, there's, there's very few bands from the 60s that were actually good. Um, in fact, off the top of my head, I can't really think of any. All right, there's 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 a handful of better ones in the 70s. There's even more in the 80s. Um, there's a handful from the 50s. All right, but I can tell you this: the Beatles are not and never will be on any playlist that I ever own. All right, they suck. All right, and I'm cert- I, I, I don't know. I would like to. I I I get the impression my girlfriend is going to disagree with me on that. Um, but the Beatles, th- they sucked. Um. I don't care about them. I don't care about their controversies. I don't care about anything that they went through. I don't care about, you know, fucking X, Y, or Z died or got married to whoever. I, I don't know how they got so big. Um, maybe it's because, I don't know, where they, you know, they weren't hip thrusting the way that Elvis was, all right? Elvis, he was a king, all right? He was the king. He is the king. He will always be the king, all right? That's like, was he 60s? I think he was in, I think he, he, he started his rise in the 60s. Um, so there's a good one from the 60s. But fuck the Beatles. They're fucking stupid. All right. You'll never catch me listening to a goddamn Beatles song. Um, however, the U2 phone push, uh, I don't know why U2 did that. I just remember someone on Facebook one day posting like, thank you, YouTube, for the album that I didn't want. And then I looked at my iPhone and saw that... Um, Saw that, uh, um, that for sure I did have a YouTube, uh, a YouTube album in my phone, uh, for no reason. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. Uh, you couldn't get rid of it as far as I know. Um, I guess it was, you know, the only thing that was cool about it wasn't necessarily the album, the artist, the songs, anything like that. The thing that was cool about it was the technology of the idea that you could, you know, just say, here's a free album and we're pushing this out to all these phones. You know, for me, from a technological standpoint, that was pretty cool. Um, What they call that? It's not, I I know it's something that's done all the time. It's not airdrop. It's, I don't know. Whatever the fuck it's called. It was, that was just, that part was kind of cool. But, you know, they just put the put the album into everyone's phone uh and you know i guess when you're a when you're a band that has made billions upon billions of dollars uh you can do that you can afford to literally give an album away for free i don't hate you two okay that i think that they have had a couple songs all right i actually enjoyed discotech i liked that one uh they have a couple other songs not a bunch i'm not you know U2 is another band. They're better than the Beatles. We'll start there. But, you know, again, not by much. Um, But they have a few tolerable songs that I will enjoy to listen to here and there. Um, However, all of that said, Jason, when you pushed, when you fucking squeezed a Beatles song into your entire goddamn episode, 
Um, I didn't enjoy to have my ear holes assaulted like that. That was unfair and uncool. And uh, I made great use of my skip forward 30 seconds button uh, in that moment. Um, I, you know, I didn't ask for that. You know, how dare you? How dare you? Uh, take a shit on YouTube, um, pushing people, pushing an album into people's phones unasked for, and then you squeeze a, a song into your podcast episode that nobody asked for. Nobody asked for, and I'm sure nobody wanted to hear either. Nobody wanted to hear that stupid ass song. Um, lastly, lastly, uh, he, he, the last 10 or 15 minutes of that episode of his, he talked about, uh, he talked about abortion and, um, yes, yes. My, my mate said, uh, never been a big fan of the Beatles. Uh, love Elvis. Yes, of course. I mean, who the fuck doesn't? He's got, he's got bangers. All right. And, um, not only did he draw off of like, you know, the equivalent of, you know, 50s and 60s, like hip hop, well, maybe not hip hop, um, jazz, um, uh, what's some other music? I don't know. He drew off of other music, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, but also music since his death has drawn off of him. So yeah, Elvis is great. Um, yeah, Elvis is great. Significantly better. Destroys the Beatles Every day of the week, all right? They're fucking terrible, okay? They they suck, all right? I don't know how they got so big, all right? And it bothered the shit out of me. You know, going back to the iPhone thing, iPhone fucked up a second time when, I think it was the iPhone, it was, it was the iPhone 4S, the introduction of Siri, used this fucking nerd, this this nerd, I don't care, I don't care how old he was. He was like 13 or 14 years old, and he was a nerd, and he had a fucking nerdy-ass Beatles haircut, and uh, and they used him in their commercial for Siri for the I- iPhone 4S when Siri was introduced. And he walks out of like, I don't know, a movie theater or something. And he says, hey, Siri, I got to learn how to play the guitar. I'm never going to. Unfortunately, I'm never going to forget this fucking commercial. He walks out and he says, hey, Siri, I need to learn to play the guitar. And then, you know, Siri says, you know, here's a list of guitar shops around you. And then he goes and buys a guitar. And then he's like, how do I play Whole Lot of Love? How do I play fucking this song? How do I play this song, right? And Siri is like giving him basically links to like YouTube videos or, um, you know, websites that that show how to play whatever song he's asking for. And the end of the commercial is him and his stupid little garage band playing Beatles songs. Ugh, it's just, you know, that was unnecessary to the, you know, that was where iPhone 4S was the last iPhone that I ever owned. And I'm convinced that the U2 thing and that commercial were both contributing factors to why I never owned another iPhone. Um, that and I just straight up didn't like iPhones. Uh, you know, it w- had nothing necessarily to do with the iPhone. It just had to do with that I wanted to do more, you know, I wanted to be more interactive with my phone. And, um, and I thought that the Galaxy was better, and it is. Um, so, there. Uh, so, anyways, the last 10 or 15 minutes, Jason wraps up his episode uh, talking about abortion. Now, I have already given my abor- my opinions on abortion um, on this show. However, uh, I'm not going to talk about abortion necessarily, but I am going to talk about the government, right? Because he mentions, like, he mentions, like, this decision of overturning Roe v. Wade, um, coming from nine people. And it got me thinking about basically the government and making all of these decisions that they make for the entirety of the country, all right? This country has like 375 million people, and there's like 500 people making decisions for us. And I, it makes me wonder, like, when was the last time the government really did something for you? Good or bad, doesn't matter. When was the last? I guess it seems like they've done more bad than good in the last ten or fifteen years. Um, you know, like when when you think of uh, when you think of the decision to uh, put sanctions on Russia, which has affected our gas prices by to the tune of two to three dollars a gallon. Um, 
you know, we didn't take a vote on that. It was that was exactly one person making a decision to do that. Um, when you think about things like Roe v. Wade, they, they didn't take a vote on this. They just they just made the decision. Nine people made a decision. Um, think about gun control, right? Now, obviously, I guess that's a little more of a hot topic issue because just about everyone has their opinion on it. But but if you took a vote of the country you probably wouldn't get 50% of people to say ban guns. Um, you would get, you know, you'd get close. You might get close to 50%, but I don't think you'd get your 50%. You think about things like uh, like gay marriage, okay? Like, that's another one. That's another excellent one. Like, like these, like, nobody can truly, I don't believe anyways, I don't believe that anyone can truly be unbiased, right? So if you take someone like, in our in our lovely state, it's Senator Jean Shaheen. She has her own opinions on gun control. She has her own opinions on abortion. She has her own opinions on um, gay marriage. She has her own opinions on fucking every topic that you can possibly think of. I don't believe that that person can be unbiased because she could get a thousand phone calls from a thousand different people who are going to give a thousand different opinions. And even if those thousand opinions are something like, Ban, you know, uh, ban, ban uh, gay marriage, right? If those thousand or whatever, uh, make gay marriage illegal. That's the word that I'm looking for. Make gay marriage illegal. If her opinion at the end of the day is, well, I don't, I don't think that, you know, that, then that's how she's going to go vote. You, you're not going to change her mind by calling. And you can say like, oh, you know, it's her constituents. She's supposed to represent the people. She's going, all of them are going to go into their little hearings or whatever with their own bias and their own opinions and their own thoughts on a matter. And, and you know, I, you know, when was, I don't really know how to fix it. It feels like, it feels like, you know, if you've ever been fishing, all right, if you've ever been fishing and you, and you spool up your line, like you're pulling in a fish or something like that and you spool up your line and all of a sudden something gets fucked up and your line just gets completely messed up. Your your line is just a complete fucking disaster. It looks like a fucking it looks like a bird's nest next to your hand of this clear string. And and you have two options. You can try to unfuck this spool or you can just cut it off and and start new. I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying like overthrow the government. I'm not one of those people. But I am saying that something needs to fucking change. Like, we got to figure out something here. Like, I'm, I've always been in the, under the opinion of, like, much like I, I say with libertarianism, like, like um, you know, each state should basically just have its own thing, right? Each, you know, fucking do away with all the federal government stuff. And every state should just be like, look, this is our state and this is how we're going to run our state. You know, your federal laws can go fuck themselves, all right? And, you know, if... If one state says, you know, all the guns are legal, and if another state says all the guns are un, are illegal, then, you know, you can decide which state you want to go live in. And, and those states can also decide, you know, how much is this affecting our commerce? How much is this affecting our economy when, when people don't want to live here because of what, we, what, what we've decided that we want to do? I think that you'd see a lot of, of, um, a lot of change, right? You, you, you know... If, if a state says, hey, we believe that gay marriage should be illegal, we believe that abortion should be illegal, and we believe that guns should all be banned, that state is going to have a rough economy because nobody's going to want to live or work there, and, and they're going to visit that state as little as possible. If you have another state that says, you know, hey, we just want people to get along. That's what we want. We want people to come to our state and just, you know, and, and be friendly with each other. That state's going to get the most fucking visitors that state, you know, look at New Hampshire. New Hampshire is one of the most visited states in the country. And, and we have our saying of live free or die. So I don't know. Those are some of my thoughts for the night. All that said, um, yeah, I guess, uh, all incumbent, let's see here. My, my, my uncle Bobby said, uh, all incumbents should be voted out. Uh, both parties. Yeah. I mean, everything should just be, yeah. Let's fucking start new. Let's let's start fresh here. Let's fucking let's get every term limits big time on term limits. You know, people that have been in government that are like making, you know, like, you know, the, the Supreme Court justice thing of that being like a lifetime um, appointment. 
That's ridiculous. Like you're talking about people who have their own beliefs and their own bias from 40, 50, 60 fucking years ago um, that are making rules, that are making laws, that are making decisions for modern day. That doesn't, it, the, the math doesn't check out on that. All right. Um, I don't like it. Uh, so anyways, those are some of my, some of my dumb thoughts for the evening. I hope you enjoyed my shit happens when you party naked companion episode. Um, the, the, you know, this is the companion episode to, uh, to Jay's episode. When was this posted? It's called, uh, it was called Jay pride month and it was posted on, uh, on, on June 30th, 2022. So if you would be so kind, if you, if you want to, if you want to go and listen to his episode on, uh, on Patreon, um, it'll cost you $3 and 50 cents and you'll be able to listen to all of his episodes. You'll be able to listen to all of his episodes and then cancel your Patreon, okay? If that's what you really want. Or you'll be like me and say, hey, you know what? He's worth the, uh, the you know, $36 a year or whatever that math works out to. I think it's about 30, $36, $37 a year, something like that. Maybe it's 42 because I think I checked the math on that. It might be $42 a year. Which, come on, what else are you spending $42 a year on, all right? It's one of the cheapest things you're going to spend $42 on in the entire year of 2022. Okay, there. Now I think I'm done. I think that my mate is home, so I'm gonna go, you know, catch up with her for a minute before I uh, before I put my head on the pillow for the night. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my episode tonight, and uh, and I'll check in with you next week. And I promise that I'm going to I'm going to force my mate into a into a schedule where where I say, hey, Friday night we're recording an episode together. No ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, but it won't be this Friday night. We got other stuff going on. So, all right. Have a good night, everyone. Uh, check out my sponsors, uh, 4HM Clothing, um, AdamEve.com, uh, StrikeForceEnergy.com, and Manscaped.com. Use offer code ADULTING at any one of those sites. Get varying degrees of, uh, of discounts. Um, okay, bye.